This video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. And while supplies last, if you mention Saffron Olive in your order notes, we'll hook you up with a free Saffron Olive sticker with any Card Kingdom order. Hello everyone, it's Seth probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Budget Magic. So this week, we are heading to Modern as we wait for Throne of Alderaan to release and shake up Standard, and we are playing a sweet M20 card. This is a Soul Sisters deck, but with a twist. This is an Ajani Strength of the Pride Soul Sisters deck, which seems like just the perfect card to take advantage of in Budget Soul Sisters. So, gaining life, hopefully, wrathing all of our opponent's stuff, or at least making some of Johnny's Pride Maids with a Johnny Strength of the Pride and parlaying that into a win. So as you can see, just under 100 bucks of paper, 36 ticks on Magic Online, mostly because a Johnny Strength of the Pride costs a few dollars, but a really decent price for a super sweet deck. And a quick reminder before we break down a Johnny Sisters for Modern. If you enjoy this deck, and you enjoy budget magic in general, it would be amazing of you. If you take a second, click that subscribe button down at the bottom of your screen. It's a great way to support the channel and the site for free. So let's talk Ajani Sisters, starting with Ajani Strength of the Pride. This is the reason we are playing the deck, and it's kind of like Ajani Strength of the Pride was built to be in a Soul Sisters deck. So first off, comes down for four mana, five loyalty, plus is to gain life equal a number of creatures we control, which is helpful, and planeswalkers we control. So we're at least gaining one from having a Johnny. And then, negative two, we make a literal Johnny's Pride Mate token. Whenever we gain life, it gets bigger. And then the zero ability is one of the best payoffs in some matchups. Zero, as long as we have at least 35 life, 15 more than our starting life total, we wrath away each artifact and each creature opponents control. So we just sweep away essentially everything on our opponent's board, minus like planeswalkers and enchantments. But for the most part, artifacts and creatures covers most of the threats you're dealing with. So a Johnny's Strength of the Pride, if we break down exactly what it does, first off, the plus one, it joins our life gain package. We have Soul Warden and Martyr of Sands is our ways to gain life. The cards are very different. Soul Warden, really good at gaining repeatable life. Whenever a creature comes into play, we gain a life, making a really good way to grow like our Ajani Pride Mate tokens, because every time a creature comes in, not only are we gaining a life, we're putting a counter on it to make our Pride Mates huge. Martyr of Sands, on the other hand, gains us a huge chunk of life. We gain a bunch of life, hopefully get up over 35 so we can wrath everything away with our Ajani Strength of the Pride. Then we have Ajani's Pride Mate, and Ajani Strength of the Pride literally makes Ajani's Pride Mate. The floor on Ajani's strength of the pride is we play it we make a 2-2 of johnny's pride mate as long as it lives we make another one the next turn and then as we're getting life these cards get really big this is kind of our finisher even though it's just two mana it gets so big over the course of the game that it often becomes like a 5-5 even a 10-10 just the biggest thing on the battlefield really quickly then we have winds of abandoned and winds of abandoned is kind of like a johnny's ultimate that's the comparison there that's our interaction package winds of abandoned can be like a bad path to exile two mana sorcery speed but if we over load it for six mana it gets rid of everything all of our opponent's creatures as like a mass path to exile kind of the white cyclonic rift is what i compare it to uh, so it works along with johnny's zero ability where we can just get rid of our opponent's entire board swing in with all of our creatures our big pride mates close out the game with one massive attack so that's kind of what a johnny does we also have some really good support cards for our plan so to support our life gaining plan soul warden martyr of sands and also a johnny is secondarily we have squadron hawks and spectral procession so Squadron Hawk works really well with both of our cards. We can play one, get three more in our hand, which gives us a ton of white cards to reveal to Martyr of Sands to make sure we're getting up over 35 life for a Johnny. Also, every Squadron Hawk we play is triggering our Soul Worms to gain a life to grow our Pride Mates and our Pride Mate tokens. And then Spectre Procession, while it is a white card for Martyr of Sands, it's mostly to work with Soul Warden. It's three creatures coming into play. So that's three life gain triggers, three counters on all of our Pride Mates, growing our threats really, really big. So something like turn one Soul Warden, turn to a Johnny, Pride Mate, Trigger Soul Warden, make it a 3-3, turn 3 Spectral Procession, 3 Creatures, 3 Soul Warden Triggers, that's going to make Pride Mate a 6-6 six, six. on turn 3, attacking, smashing our opponent for tons of damage. Then we have our other finisher. So to close out the game, we're mostly using a 6-6 six, six Flying Life Flinker. Ranger of Eos can tutor up our Sarah Senate. Sarah Senate, as long as we get up to 30 life, is a 6-6 six, six Life Linking Flyer for 1 mana, which is insane. We're gaining huge chunks of life, we're hitting for huge chunks of damage in the air. It is just 
just an absurd card in this deck. So that's one of our best ways to close out the game quickly. Sometimes we just go Martyr of Sands on turn one, activate Martyr of Sands, get up over 30 life, play Saracen on turn two, and we just have a 6-6 flying lifelinker on turn two, which even in modern is a really big threat. We can also use Ranger of Eos to tutor up our life gain stuff. We can snag a Martyr of Sands if we need to gain life, snag a Soul Warden if we got some Pride Mates and need those repeated life gain triggers. And that is basically the deck. Otherwise, we have two Honor of the Pure kind of does two things. It can speed up our clock. If we play Spectral Procession with Honor of the Pure, we get a bunch of 2-2 flyers. We can steal games that way, sometimes by attacking in the air. More importantly, if you look at the creatures in our deck, outside of Ranger of Eos and Ajani's Pride Mate, almost all of our creatures have one toughness, which means basically our entire deck gets wrecked by Renin 6. So Honor of the Pure is a way we can kind of play around Red and 6 by pumping our toughness to make sure that our opponent can't just like Ren and 6, ping down our board, ping down our board, ping down our board, because that would be pretty unbeatable otherwise. So, good way to speed up our clock. Also, a way to just save our creatures from a really heavily played two-mana Planeswalker in the format. Mana base-wise, mostly a bunch of basic planes, a couple of misfilled planes, a way we can put a card from our graveyard on the bottom of our library for just a single mana and tapping it. Works really well with Squadron Hawks. We can, like, play Squadron Hawk, block with Squadron Hawk, put Squadron Hawk back at the bottom of our deck, play another Squadron Hawk that we had tutor up from our hand to tutor up that Squadron Hawk. So, once we get going in the late game, kind of gives us this infinite Squadron Hark loop that we can just keep generating that value, keep making blockers or attackers. Ghost Quarter deal with Tron. One Amiria. We're not an Amiria deck. It's mostly just in the deck because we had room in the budget, and it is good. We have 18 planes, two more counting missile planes, which is a plane, so 20 planes in the deck total. So we will eventually get to seven planes. If we have Amiria, we can just start getting back like our Martyr of Sand, start getting back stuff that had died throughout the game. So even though it's not the focus of the deck, it does offer a lot of value as a one of. Sideboard wise, a bunch more removal. Another Winds of Abandon, early game, late game sweeper, cleansing Nova, kind of sweet because it can wrath creatures, can also be like a bad fracturing gust where we get rid of all the artifacts against Wurza or whatever, all the enchantments against, I don't know, some enchantment deck that no one plays. Uh, so kind of a nice utility card, like it is a sideboard option, especially in this deck, which is good at slowing down the game. Because we have so much life gain, it's unlikely that most decks, outside of fast combo, which is a concern, but most creaturey decks are not going to be able to kill us quickly because we gain so much life, which means getting to five mana actually pretty likely in this deck. We also have two disenchants to deal with batter skulls and swords and all the Stoneforge stuff, also Urza decks, Celestial Verge to deal with Jund, Renin Sixes, Death Shadows, hits a lot of targets actually. One Burrington Forge Shender, good tutor target against red decks, protection from red, and like saves our board from an Anger of the Gods, a Pyroclasm. Dapping Sphere to shut down combo decks. That is one of the concerns with this deck, why we're really good at grinding fair decks with our life gain or burn decks with our life gain and our repeatable creatures and our value. Uh, if our opponent's playing fast combo, things can get a little bit sketchy. So Dapping Sphere, that's our answer, hopefully, to decks like Storm. Tormod's Crypt to deal with Graveyard. Sorcerer Spyglass shutting down Planeswalkers like Ugin or Oblivion Stone. Stones, and that is a Johnny Sisters for Bodard, and that's our budget magic deck for this week. So let's get to the gameplay, see if a Johnny Strength of the Pride, combined with a ton of life gain stuff, can make its presence felt on a budget in Modern. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoy it, and I'll be back in a bit with a wrap up. All right, budget magic time. We are playing some a Johnny Sisters in Modern, and we're gonna keep this. Soul Warden to get things started. Honor the Pure for Pumpage. Noble Hierarch for our opponent. Well, ooh, okay. Um, yeah, let's still lead on Soul Warden. Pass the turn. Then we get to Squadron Hawk, draw a bunch of cards. Then that turns on. Then that turns on, uh, Martyr of Sands. So gain some life. Opponent. Wow. All the ramp. All the ramp in the world. Birds, Birds, Hierarch. Opponent. Passes. Well, Planes, Squadron Hawk, gain a life, grab two more Hawks for now. Go to combat. Get in with Soul Warden. I am not sure what our opponent's doing. <laughs> one Snow-Covered Forest, one non-Snow-Covered Forest. Pile of Mana Dorks. I have no idea what this is. Bonet. Runs out. Ooh, Tamio. That's spicy. All right. All right, all right. Uh-huh. Takes up, takes up. Opponent's going to start drawing some Tamiyo cards, potentially. Yeah, gets into a Noble High Arc. Well, we can't let our opponent Omniscience, that's for sure. Draws a card. Oh, this might be... Hmm. I wonder if this is a Super Friends deck. 
That would make sense if this is like double moonwalkers. Opponent passes. Play a planes. Play honor the pure. Pump our dorks. Play martyr of sands. Go to combat. Hit Tamio. Opponent gets to draw another card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the card advantage. Oh, I am very scared. If our opponent just starts throwing down huge planeswalkers, that is very bad news for us. Opponent cracks Misty. Temple Garden. Untapped. Stoneforge Mystic. Ugh. If they have a sword with protection from white, <laughs> that's kind of bad news. All right, Fire and Ice. At least it's not protection from white. Picks up. Opponent. Passes. Well, go to combat. Ugh, opponent could have Batter Skull. Hmm. Or, like, Restoration Angel. Oh, is this Cryptic? Cryptic taps. Yup. Well, in that case, we will just Spectral Procession. Pass the turn. I mean, I feel like we're in okay-ish shape. If we can get a land to get our Ranger of Eoses going, then things get even better. But, I mean, we got a... We're at 27. Pose is 16, and we have a lot of flyers. Definitely not... This is, like, just Bant mid-range Stoneforge, I think. I was worried it was a, a Planeswalker tribal Super Friends deck, but... Whew! Thankfully, I would much rather play against... I would much rather play against a Stoneforge deck, I think. Ugh. No Light and Shadow. No Light and Shadow. No Light and Shadow. Because we can grind. We can grind and grind and grind. And then eventually a Johnny can steal. There's a Batter Skull. Opponent. Passing. All right, we untap. Play the planes, go to combat. Can we kill this Tamio finally? No. Cryptic part two. Hmm. Oh, we really don't want to get hit by the sword. All right, let's, let's Spectral Procession. Make some more flyers, pass the turn. Opponents gotta run out of cryptic someday. <laughs> They've already used two. How many can they possibly have? Gavany Township. All right. That's gonna let the Birds of Paradise get big. Ticks up on two spirits. And Knight of the Reliquary. Yup. Do they have Cryptic 3? 1, 2, 3, 4. Hmm. They could have Cryptic 3. Opponent. Passing. Well, we will go to combat. No Cryptic? No Cryptic. All right, so. Tamio. 1, 2, Tamio. 3, 4, 5. Do we go even more? All right, five at Tamio, two at our opponent. All right, Tamio, down. Opponent does get to draw. Man, that Tamio did some work. Opponent drew four. Not bad for four mana. Um, let's Ranger of Eos. Uh, opponent has remand. I'll play the planes. Pass the turn. Here comes something. Batter skull. Gotta be batter skull. It's a batter skull. Yup. Ooh, and we actually get hit by the sword since we attack with all of our flyers? Huh. That's not great. Not great at all. Opponent, combat. Oh, we don't get hit by the sword. Attacks. Well, we will definitely... Opponent's got a lot of counters. We will block with Martyr of Sands. We'll sack Martyr of Sands. Reveal a bunch of stuff. Go up to some high life total. 45. Man, a Johnny resolving would be so absurd. Opponent. Yeah. Hits us for zero. Knight of the Reliquary Part 2. We gain a life. Opponent passes. Well, go to combat. See if our opponent drew Cryptic 3. They did. Oh, these Cryptics. Yup. Well, we will play Saracendant. Gain a life. Squadron Hawk. Gain a life. Grab a Squadron Hawk. Squadron Hawk, gain a life. All right. Well, we have quite the board. We're at 49 life. We have a lot of power worth of flyers. Can we somehow close out this game through Cryptic Command Tribal? <laughs> at least that's what it feels like. It feels like Cryptic Tribal. <sighs> oh, opponent, crack of their fetch. Breeding pool. Untapped to nine. Pretty impressive that they had one blue source and cast three cryptics. Those mana dorks doing some serious work. Uh, build it. Batter skull on a knight of the reliquary. But all right, opponent's just trying to gain as much life as possible. 
Noble Iron. Yeah, opponent's going to gain a ton. Is it enough? Ooh, and the path. All right. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Opponent. Combat. Yeah, I think this is enough to keep our opponent alive. Gets in for 10. Goes back up to... Ugh. 19. Actually, more. Because they can crack this. Windswept Eath. Crack it. All right. So we take 12. Opponent goes back to 20. We go to 38. We untap. We go to combat. We swing with all of our flyers, but they're not lethal. Just short. Opponent goes to two. Well, we will play Ranger Vios. Resolves. Tutor. For Martyr of Sands. S oh, do we want even want Martyr of Sands? Maybe we just go double Sarah Ascendant. Sarah send it, Sarah send it. Play Sarah send it. Gain a life. Play Sarah send it. Gain a life. The flyers keep coming. All right, opponent. Put your sword into play. Yeah, there's a sword of fire. Nice. Opponent untaps. <laughs> what a standoff. We just didn't hit any of our Raz. We didn't hit a Johnny. And a Johnny would have been so incredibly insane. Opponent. Tamio. Okay. Ooh. Tamio to get back Cryptic and tap our team? Yup. All right. Cryptic part 47 incoming. A uh, Johnny. A uh, Johnny. <laughs> I want to draw to Johnny so bad. It would be so good. Is our opponent going to Cryptic now? Okay. Opponent. Wow. Huh. Does our opponent have enough mana? Interesting. Opponent. Oh, yeah, they have Knight of the Reliquary, so they do. Goes attacking. Goes attacking. Well, we'll just block with Ranger of Eos. Opponent gains a bunch of life. And Temple Garden. Tapped. All right. Well, we untap. Martyr of Sands. Go to combat. Opponent going to Cryptic. So many Cryptics. Windswept Teeth. Cracks Windswept Teeth. Hollowed Vow and untapped. Well, we go to combat. Opponent Cryptic taps our team. Yup. So we will play Soul Warden, gain a life. Play Martyr of Sands, gain some life. Play Squadron Hawk, gain some life. And pass the turn. Still no Ajani. Ajani's the card we've wanted this whole time. Evolution Sage. Oh! This is going to proliferate Tabio to get back Cryptic again? Ah! <laughs> oh, I don't think I've ever been cryptic more in a single match. A single game? Wow, we had this one a hundred times over, but Cryptic will just not let us get away with it. And we cannot draw in a Johnny. We just cannot draw in a Johnny. But it proliferates. Crags proliferates. Putting counters on the Tabio. Oh, Wow, we had so many turns to hit. Either a Johnny or, or a, a Winds of Abandon. And we have gone 22 cards deep and haven't hit a single one. Opponent gets back Cryptic. Again. Opponent plays Knight of the Reliquary number three. We go to 50. Opponent. Combat. Attacks. Get some triggers. They gotta be running out of lands, right? How many lands can they possibly have? Black with Martyr of Sands. Sack Martyr of Sands. Reveal Ranger of Eos. 53. A Johnny. Planes. Well, go to combat. Opponent cryptics. Again. Cryptic. Taps our team. Again. Well, we will play Ranger of Eos. <laughs> Gain some life. Tutor up some cards. Um, Martyr of Sands. Soul Warden. Play Soul Warden. Gain some life. Play a Planes. Play Martyr of Sands. Gain some life. And pass the turn. This has been just a ridiculous game. Opponent. Oh, we've had our opponent like on the edge of being dead, but they just keep crypticking. Opponent sacks of planes. How many let one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. They gotta be getting close to running out of activations of these Knight of Reliquaries. They got to. Gotta. Another Tamio for our opponent. And a Field of Ruin to proliferate. Counters on their dorks. 
Sacks a breeding pool. Oh my god. Gets a horizon canopy. Proliferates. Yeah, I think our opponent's gonna get us. Wow. We just could not draw what we needed. Could not find it a Jotty. Could not find a Winds of Abandoned. Whew. Opponent gets a Ghost Quarter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Opponent up to ultimating this Tamiyo Field Researcher. Ultimate Tamiyo Field Researcher. Oh, those cryptics were brutal. Plays a big Tamiyo. Yeah, cryptic was insane. We just, we basically got cryptic lock. The synergy of, the synergy of Tamiyos with cryptics is pretty good. And I mean, also our opponent got triple. Triple Knight of the Reliquary going. Noble High Arc. And now I'm not, I don't think there's a way for us to win from here. Knight of the Reliquary number four for free. Up to 65. Opponent, combat, attacks. Gonna gain 19. And they get to Cryptic again. And they get to... Ugh. Yeah, they get to Cryptic again. And they get to Proliferate to Cryptic again. I still can't believe they haven't run out of lands. Oh my god. There's our Ajani, but it's too late, I think. Go to combat. Well, we'll see. Cryptic taps the team. Well, I mean, this is our hope that it resolves. Ajani. Come on, come on, come on, Ajani. You're our hope. Wow, desperation sack? Come on, no, 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 no. Opponent draws a card, come on. Resolve, resolve, Ajani. <laughs> this is the game hanging in the balance. Does it resolve? It would be so good. Opponent sacks a land, windswept teeth proliferates is it gonna resolve cracks a what <laughs> cracks a land oh come on <laughs> runs out of lands finally oh 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 johnny whoa oh oh the best of johnny the best of johnny the best oh my god Oh my god. <laughs> well, that's why it's a Johnny Sisters. And that's what this deck can do that older Soul Sisters decks could not. Wow. Sword of Fire Dice. Batter Skull. Four copies of Knight of the Reliquary. Two Stone Forge. Literally just everything. Everything. God for four mana. Oh, wow. Huh. <sighs> And now there's a second concern for our opponent, which is they're at 7 minutes and 43 seconds. We're at 17 minutes. So even if they manage to beat us from here with their omniscience emblems and Tamios, uh, it's going to be hard for them to complete all the matches necessary to win this. The good news for our opponent is since they have the omniscience emblem, <laughs> um... Their mana, which is horrible, isn't actually too big of a concern at the moment. I'll go to combat. Opponent cryptics. Taps our team. Well, let's spectral procession. Gain some life. Up to 75 past the turn. Opponent. What a wild magic game. Evolution Sage. So opponent's going to ultimate another Tamiyo, I think. <laughs> Flooded Strand. Counters on Tamiyo. They're going to ultimate another Tamiyo, but can they beat us? We're at 78. Can they beat us without milling out? Taps down a token. <laughs> what a just absurd match of magic. Absurd. Oh, that Johnny was so good. So good. Ta oh my god, more cryptics. Okay. So, bet. Uh, all right. So, opponent's going to be able to... Wow, opponent didn't do anything. Is our opponent just giving up? <laughs> what? Why well, just get like Cyclonic Rift? Opponent scoops it up. Oh my goodness. Wow, was that an absurd game of magic? That was that was absurd. That was just absurd. But a Johnny came through. So Sorcerer Spyglass in. Sorcerer Spyglass in. Um maybe Winds of Abandon? What do we cut though? I guess we can go down. <clears throat> and Honor of the Pure. We can actually probably go down two Honor of the Pures. There's no Ren and Six to worry about. So I think we can get away with cutting one. And then 
Eh, let's just stick with three wins of abandon. Run it like that. Wow, that was a game. Well, okay. Not gonna lose to Tamios. <laughs> Hopefully. Missy Raid Force, Bona cracks it. Sorcerer's Spyglass gonna shut you down the Planeswalkers. Bona, the noblest of hierarchs. Well, land. Martyr. Go. Yeah, opponent's gonna have a hard time finishing this without timing out. Birds of Paradise. Uh, opponent passes. I'll play the planes. Sorceress by glass. Opponent cracks when swept teeth. Breeding pool tapped. Ooh. Well, Tamio the Moon Sage will be named. Pass the turn. Uh, yeah, I might as well get in. Worship is a little bit, a little bit annoying. Although a Johnny to get rid of all the creatures or Winds of Abandon to get rid of all the creatures does save us. Breeding pool untapped. We need something that gets countered to force through our better spells. Ooh, all right. Opponent just runs out batter skull. Well, there's a Johnny. Play squadron hog. Grab three squadron hogs and pass the turn. So we get to block sack, gain a bunch of life. Ugh. Honestly, our best plan here might just be to stall out. Opponent, combat. Uh, attacks. Yeah. Well, opponent, you're going to get to see our hand. We're going to block. We will sack. Gain 15? <clears throat> I don't like showing our opponent the Johnny. Because that means they'll probably play around it. When otherwise, we haven't exactly enough life where we could activate it. Opponent passes. Hmm. Um, let's see. Let's play... Play Soul Warden. Play Squadron Hawk. Gain a life. All right. Opponent bounces our Sorceress by glass. They want to get... Apparently... Apparently they want to get down their big Tamio. Um, yeah, no attacks. Having a hard time imagining our opponent being able to close this out without running out of time. Opponent combat gets in. So I think we have to chump because of a Johnny. If our opponent taps out for Tamio, then we get to Johnny and just wrath their creatures, which would be pretty good. All right, there's the Tamio. Draws a couple cards. Passes. I'll play a Plains. Ugh. All right, play a Johnny. Zero a Johnny. Go to combat. Man, a Johnny is pretty good. This also lets us kill Tamio. Oh no, path? Table Garden. Untap. Yeah, it looks like a path. So Tamio's gonna survive. Pass Soul Warden. Well, we're gonna land out of our deck. That's fine. Tamio goes to one. Snow Covered Island. I mean, we got rid of two mana dorks and a batter skull, which was good. And it only cost us an a Johnny. Ugh, more Tamios. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Opponent passes. Well, we will play Sorceress Spyglass. Name Tamio the Moon Sage. We will play Sorceress Spyglass. We will name Tamio Field Researcher. Martyr of Zans. Pass the turn. Oh, all right. Sorceress Spyglass is coming through. Gavin Township for our opponent. And worship. Yeah, so got to kill the creatures before we can kill our opponent. Opponent passes. Ooh, Amiri is interesting. And I'll play Ranger Vios. Tutor. Up. Um Sarah Ascendant Soul Warden. Play Soul Warden. Play Sarah Ascendant. Play Amiria. Go to combat. Um, and to be safe, we're actually going to kill a Tamio. I expect our opponent has answers somewhere. So getting rid of the thing that could come back online if our opponent kills Sorcerer Spyglass makes sense, I think. Stoneforge. Hopefully there's no pro white sword in the deck. Fire and Ice. All right. Plays it and equips. Sure, sure, sure. Opponent passes. And I'll play a Johnny's Pride Mate. Gain some life, grow a Johnny's Pride Mate. Play Squadron Hawk. Gain some life, grow a Johnny's Pride Mate. Play Squadron Hawk. Gain some life, grow Pride Mate. Go to combat. Kill Tamio, hit our opponent. There's also not a ton of sense in attacking our opponent's life total since they have this worship anyway. So we need to draw something to get rid of the creatures before we can actually kill our opponent, which is probably going to be another Ajani. Evolution Sage. Thankfully, there's no Planeswalkers. Opponent. Passes. Oh, that's good. Uh, Overload you. And I think we're actually just going to win. Wins of Abandon coming through. Man, Wits of Abandon, also impressive. Creatures down, combat, all attack. That should be more than 14. Oh, and we got there. 
Wow, that game one was insane. That game one was absolutely absurd, and I think that showed the power of a Johnny. This was a great example of the power of a Johnny. Huh. Well, got him. Got him, got him. Sweet, sweet. All right, budget magic time. We are playing some a Johnny sisters in modern, and this end looks fine. We're like a martyr away from really going to town, but... Sand seems reasonable. Squatter knocks, spectral processions, a Johnny's, gain some life, do some things. Please don't run in sixes, J. Bernardo. <laughs> 55172. <laughs> Anything but that. <sighs> run in six is really good if we don't draw honor of the viewer. It, it literally just like kills everything in our deck. That's a slight exaggeration, but almost. I guess Ranger of Eos survives, but for the most part, it just like shoots down our team. Four is for our opponent, and search for tomorrow's suspended hmm well land and sarah send it go so it looks like scape shift i'm not sure how this goes search ticking down what if fails opponent cracks it snow covered mountain and sicker tribe elder uh, we draw a ghost quarter i'll play ghost quarter play squadron hawk Tutor up some squadron hogs. I think we attack with Sarah Ascendant. If our opponent wants to give up a rampant growth to kill our Sarah Ascendant, we're actually okay with that. Get in. See if our opponent trades or if they just block sack. Oh, all right. Or neither. <laughs> neither is also an option. I didn't think that was an option, but it is. Huh. That is very strange. I mean, if you're gonna sack anyway, why not save two life? Or save a life and us gaining a life, so a two life swing. Opponent, search for tomorrow's. Uh huh. Another snow covered mountain. Stomping grounds. Tapped. Getting close to the prime time part of the game, unfortunately. Ugh. Oh no. Peeling the squadron hawk is never ideal when you have squadron hawks in hand. It's kind of like skipping a draw, because we could just tutor it out anyway. Yeah, that's that's a slight bit sad. Squadron Hog. Uh, nothing to tutor for since we just drew it. <laughs> Pass the turn. All right, you got the Titan. Please no. Land. Cracks it. Well, six mana. That looks like Titan mana to me. Cinderglade. Six mana. Primeval Titan. Okay. I guess this is bad news. We get what? Double Valakut? Double Valakut. Opponent. Passes. We draw a Plains. <sighs> so kill a Valakut, kill a Valakut, kill Primeval Titan, I guess. And then we use all of our mana, though. And we lose two lands. Well, Ghost Quarter. Ghost Quarter of Valakut. Ghost Quarter of Valakut. Winds of Abandoned Primeval Titan. <laughs> this was a painful turn. I, I mean, we had to do it. Opponent finally ran out of land, so they have five, six basics. Go attacking. Hit our opponent. Down to 12. Uh, We are like ultra dead to scape shift one two five eight potentially nine lands maybe they only have two valakuts you never know opponent looks like a scape shift all right well we're gonna make our opponent do it we killed two valakuts we ran them out of basics i don't i assume that they could still kill us here it seems likely that they could still kill us but you never know maybe the two ghost quarters opponent's keeping one mountain that's of note well, we'll see. We'll see what they get. We're at 23. Do they have enough? After the two ghost quarters, after the ramp spells. Seems like they should, but... Eh. Doesn't hurt to make them show it. Two Valakuts, a lot of mountains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, that's 30 damage. All right. And you got us. Primeval Titan, eh? Primeval Titan. Ha. Huh. Uh, we don't have much for this matchup. Burrington Forge Tender in. One Spectral Procession out. Go. <laughs> Whew. Well, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think we can win by, like, Martyr of Sansara Send it. Just grow a huge Sarah Send it right away. That seems like a good way to jank out our opponent. All right. We are on the play. Hmm. Land, honor the... Ugh, all right. Uh, we're going to keep this. I'm not excited by it. Land, go. So, Honor of the Pure Spectral Procession Ranger of Eos. We're going to have a clock. Is it enough? 
opponent, Forest, and suspends search for Manana. All right, land, honor the pure. Go. Well, let's see if our clock is enough. We don't really have any life gain. Opponent, search for return Maru's. Taking it down. Mountain. More ramp. Yep. Pass the turn. And opponent's going to be to primeval time pretty quick. Spectral procession. Pass the turn. I mean, that's a clock in the air. Is it fast enough, though? Opponent's going to ramp, ramp, land drop. So they're going to be at five mana this turn, which means turn four titan most likely if they have it so search for tomorrow's comes down yup land number four uh, opponent tireless tracker getting the card draw on yeah lots of card draw clue cracks it cinder glade clue two and skirt well all right we may just be dead next turn opponent passes i'll play ghost quarter go to combat attack opponent down to 12 Play Ranger of Eos. Grab. Huh. Let's go Martyr of Sands, Soul Warden. Well, no scape shifts, please. No scape shifts, no prime times. No scape shifts, no prime times. Cracks. Up to six mana. Yeah, we might just be a slight touch slow unless Titan Shift stumbles. Titan Shift, probably on the short list of best decks post banning at least top tier decks post banning opponent looks like they have the titan they do well that's a turn four titan getting lands getting clues huh is there any way out valicut and land yep and a mountain to trigger valicut gonna kill one of our flyers hmm opponent no attacks we draw planes. I'll play Soul Warden. Play Squadron Hawk. Gain a life. Get a bunch of hawks. Play a land. Play Martyr of Sands. Gain a life. Go attacking. Hit our opponent to eight. So we can gain 15 up to 37, but Titan plus land drops, yeah. I don't think this beats a Titan. Opponent untaps. We could have focused on playing Sarah Senate and making it big, but it would still just got, uh, get shot down by Valakut triggers. So that doesn't really doesn't really save us either. Opponent combat gets in with Titan and Tireless Tracker. Well, here comes the Wrath, and opponent has <laughs> has enough clues to draw their entire deck. Essentially, two more Valakuts, two more clues. Yeah, sure. We'll take it. Actually, no. Eh, yeah, we'll take it. Our only chance is to somehow win on the backswing. But our opponent has enough Valakut triggers to, I think, sweep our board. Cracks a clue. Grows Tireless Tracker. Cracks a clue. Grows Tireless Tracker. Clue. Tracker. So we take a billion down to ten. Opponent cracks Wooded Foothills. Grabs a mountain. Gonna kill our stuff. Huh. Yeah, that's that's tough. So Martyr of Sands, reveal everything. Mostly squadron hogs. Gain a bunch of life, but lose our board. So we go to twenty five, phony gets more clues. Board wrecked. And yeah. We'll see if our opponent has another land. If our opponent doesn't have another land for Valica, in theory our second honor of the pure is now. Otherwise they got us. Oh, I see. That was a uh, just a little, just a little, uh, just a little uh, <laughs> unnecessary rub-ins to kill our stuff. I got it. I guess they wanted to see how much life we could gain, but I mean, we were we were dead. I'm not sure why they they want to go that direction. All right, well, yeah, that's a tough one. That is a tough one. Uh, one thing to keep in mind with a non-budget build is against a deck like that, something like Crucible of Worlds with Ghost Quarter can be effective, uh, possibly. So. But yeah, that might just be a tough matchup for us. Yeah, yeah, you can't win them all, especially with a hundred dollar deck. Not a great Johnny matchup, sadly. Yeah, all right, all right, all right, all right. Budget magic time. We are playing some a Johnny sisters in modern, and well, this end is awkward. We don't have any life gain, but in theory, just. Honor of the Pure into Spectral Processions could be reasonable. Well, there's life gain. All right. 
Well, we'll give it a go. Land, Soul Warden. Go. Opponent cracks a windswept youth, grabs a breeding pool. Sure. Flooded strand for our opponent. Passes. Well, play a planes. Play Honor of the Pure. Go to combat. Um, I don't even think we can attack because of Ice Fang Codal. Opponent cracks. Down to 18. Snow Covered Island. Liars Coatl. Yup. Well, we're gaining life, which is nice. Life gain is good. Up to 21. Opponent. So opponent looks like they're playing Bant Soul Herder, Coiling Oracle. And there's the Soul Herder. Huh. <sighs> scary, scary, scary. Plays a Snow Covered Plains. So opponent's gonna start drawing cards like crazy. Opponent passes. I'll play the Plains, Spectral Procession. Up to 25, pass the turn. Having a bunch of flyers isn't bad though. Eventually they will get there, and eventually we can overload this Winds of Abandon, so we might have a chance. Ephemerate, opponent, yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing what Soul Herder does, drawing a million cards. I think we gotta go aggro, because our opponent will draw a million cards. That is how Soul Herder works. So we need to, we need to stay aggressive. Opponent gets to Fairy Time Raveler. Plays a Flooded Strand. Five mana, six cards in hand. Yeah, opponent, this deck is just so good at grinding out value that I'm actually not sure if we can keep up. If we got a chance, it's going to be by being aggro. Because we're not going to stop the value engine of our opponent just drawing infinite cards each turn. Now, opponent has time warp. Well, maybe our opponent's going to just go infinite. Opponent's playing a uh, an old build of Soul Herder that's still playing time warps. Generally have fallen out of favor among the most current builds of the deck. Opponent figuring out their next move. Yeah, this feels like a challenging matchup. Eternal Witness, uh, yeah, that's game, sure. Opponent just gets to uh, go infinite with Time Warp, so we don't actually have a way to stop that. Well, that was punishing, punishing, punishing. We actually don't have a ton to bring in against this deck, sadly. Uh, yeah. We'll bring in one more removal spell, but that's about it. Yeah, this is probably close to unwinnable matchup-wise. <laughs> Opponent just gets to draw a million cards. Uh, we do not get to draw a million cards. So, not sure how we actually beat this deck. Against most creature decks, we just, like, gain life and block and win of outgrind our opponent eventually with, like, a Johnny. But uh, against the Soul Herder deck, they have an infinite combo, which they assembled there when we scooped it up. They can just Eternal Witness, get back Time Warp, Soul Herder, Eternal Witness, Time Warp, Soul Herder, Eternal Witness, Time Warp, do that again and again and again, take all the turns. So they have an infinite combo that's going to win the game. And uh, all of our life gain ends up doing not much. Opponent, considering their sideboard options... Probably harder than they need to. <laughs> I think you just run it back and crush us. <laughs> Soul Herder deck's pretty legit. All right, opponent has returned. Well, we'll play first, see what happens. Yeah, all right, we can gain some life. Play a land, play Martyr of Sands. Pass the turn. Opponent. Carefully considering their options. We've officially played less than one minute of this match. Opponent gets a forest. Has a Noble High Arc. Passes. Well, play a planes. Play Squadron Hog. Get many Squadron Hogs. Go to combat. Get in for one. Pass the turn. So we can gain a ton of life. Will that be enough? Opponent Misty cracks it. Snow Covered Island. Coiling Oracle. Hits a Ice Fang Coatl. Opponent passes. Well, play a planes. Go to combat. Get in with Squadron Hog. Hit our opponent. Martyr of Sands. Reveal everything. Gain a bunch of life. Much rather be playing against Burn if we had our choice. Alright, opponent returns. Well, we will play another Martyr of Sands. Pass the turn. Here comes the Ephemerate value. Opponent, Ephemerate, Oracle, land. Ephemerate again, Oracle, land. Or Oracle card draw, maybe a land. Not a land, Coiling Oracle part two. Yeah, the whole one mana divination, pretty good. Snow covered island for our opponent. Coiling Oracle part two. It's a time warp. Well, that's bad. That means infinity is coming. Soul herder for our opponent. Blinks coiling oracle. Gets a trigger. 
hits Venser. Well, play a planes, play a Johnny. Get rid of our opponent's board. I mean, a Johnny's sweet. Our opponent's already generated a ton of value, though. So board is swept. Away go to combat. Hit our opponent. Down to 14. I mean, a Johnny's insane. A Johnny is insane. Ice Fang Quattle. Opponent. Draws a card. And passes. And play planes. Go to combat. Get in with Swatter Nog. Hit our opponent. Down to 13. Ranger Vios. Grab what? Hmm. Well, maybe we gotta go Sarah Ascendant. Yeah, Sarah Ascendant, Sarah Ascendant. Play Sarah Ascendant. Sadly, it doesn't get through the Quaddle. Pass the turn. But it does put us in a position where if we can draw an ultimate, another Ajani, then we might just win. Opponent passes. Discards the hands. Up. Man, that was a that was a good Ajani. Now well, play Soul Warden. Play a Plains. Go to combat. Attack, attack, attack. Yeah, we're going to attack with everything. We got to close out the game before our opponent draws out of this. Opponent. Blocks. Drops to eight. So, Sarah send it. Gain a life. Is a Johnny going to steal us this game? Squadron Hawk. Gain a life. I mean, we're up to 47. Squadron Hawk. Up to 40. Yeah, 47. Pass the turn. All right, opponent. What you got? What you got? There's the land. So I can time warp. Down to seven. Snow-covered planes. There's time warp. Not much progress, though. Opponent passes. Wow. That Ajani might have stolen it. I guess that's how we can beat our opponent. Wrath their board. They stumble around a little bit and sneak out the win. I like the Venser. That's spicy. Well, that's why you play Ajani, sisters. Because Ajani can do pretty busted things. Even if this isn't the best of matchups. Reflector Mage. Opponent going to bounce Sarah send it. All right, so opponent's going to live, unfortunately. And Coatl. Yep, opponent staying alive. Opponent passes. Ugh, more planes. Not great. And he'll go to combat. Attack with everything. Opponent blocks. And blocks. Drops to three. Well, we squadron hawk. Pass the turn. Oh, man, this is so close. The life totals make it look like we're crushing our opponent. But they have the ability to just stabilize and lock up the game. And once they do, we don't have a great ability to get back into it. So we really need our opponent to just die here. Opponent. Soul Herder. Noble High Arc. Flooded Strand. Opponent gets in. Okay. Do they have... They need Quaddal number... Number three, I think. Soul Herder. Blinks, Reflector Mage. Well, they're getting their locks assembled. Bounces a hawk. Well, let's see if they have it. Untap. More lands. Oh, we really got to stop drawing just lands. Go to combat. Attack. Does our opponent have an answer? Oh, they don't. Okay, Ajani. Ajani stole it. The Ajani Exiling Wrath. Enough to steal the game against the Soul Herder deck. Oh, is there anything else we could do here? Maybe we want the last Ajani? We're good at gumming up the board. Are we good enough at killing our opponent? That's that's the question. Maybe we go down a Pride Mate. We saw we saw Teferi and we saw Reflector Mage. Both of which easy ways to reset what we're doing there. Hmm. All right, let's not draw any more lands, please. Breeding pool for our opponent. Untapped. Noble High Art. Now play the planes. Play Martyr of Sands. Pass the turn. Ice Fang Quaddle's pretty good against Sarah Ascendant. Knight of Autumn for our Ibunent. Makes it big. And passes. Hmm. That was an awkward draw. I'll play Mizfell Planes. Pass the turn. We really wanted a white card so we could go activate Martyr of Sands, play Sarah Ascendant as a 6 6. But instead, we drew a land, which isn't super helpful. Well, we'll block Knight of Autumn. We will sack Martyr of Sands. Only three cards to reveal, unfortunately. Go up to 29. Does our opponent have Soul Herder? Temple Garden, tapped. Another Knight of Autumn. All right, sure. Another 4-3. Well, play Soul Warden. Play Planes. Play Soul Warden. Gain a life. Play Sarah Ascendant. Gain two life. Pass the turn. See if our opponent has an answer. 
Do they have a path or a reflector mage? Flooded Strand. Cracks it. Uh-oh. Snow-covered plains. Venser. Okay. What is Venser going to do? Can blink a Knight of Autumn. Can go unblockable to... Interesting. Interesting choice. Okay. So opponent's going to try to get us below 30. Gets in with both. It works. We drop to 24. But we go back up to 30 with Spectral Procession. Eh, planes. Well, we will Spectral Procession. Go up to 30. Go to combat. Hit our opponent. Kill Venser. Play Amiria. All right, opponent, you're going to need something good. We have a lot of flying damage. Are we going to steal this? Are we? T I, this felt like such a bad matchup in game one. It felt like unwinnable. But now I feel like we're actually kind of in good shape. Noble High Arc. We gain some more life. Land. One card in hand. Opponent. Attacks. Attacks. Well, we will block with one spirit. 34. Opponent passes. We draw. More. Man, that's a lot of planes. Go to combat. Go attacking. No quaddles. No quaddles. Opponent. You got anything. No. Down to three. We go to 40. Pass the turn. Oh, man. Oh, man. Is the stealing on? Does our opponent not have it? A Johnny Sisters? Oh, opponent gets to Ephemerate. Okay. So this allows our opponent to gain some life. And then Ephemerate to gain life. So opponent survives the turn. This buys our opponent time. With double blink of Night of Autumn. The only good news about our flood out plan is... It is getting us close to turning on Amiria. Something like Path would be annoying. Opponent gets in. We will just take the hit. Coaddle's also annoying at the moment. Um, let's put Spectral Procession on the bottom of our library. Untap. More, more planes. Well, more planes was not what we were hoping for. Attack, attack, attack. Opponent to three again. Well, uh, we pass the turn. Opponent untaps. One more whiff. One more whiff. One more whiff and we can steal it. Oh my goodness, they scoop it up and, huh, wow. Okay, well we saw, I don't know what to say. I do not know what to say. In game one, that felt unwinnable. It felt like we didn't have a chance. They just threw so many cards and did so much stuff. And then game two and game three, we actually kind of won fairly easily. Uh, yeah, well, uh, sweet. <laughs> Not gonna complain even a little about that. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Huh, a Johnny, a Johnny stealing it. All right, on to the next. All right, budget magic time. We are playing some a Johnny sisters in modern, and we have one colorless land, so this is not a keep. This isn't even a little close to a keep. Uh, yeah, got a mulligan. Well, this will keep, and we will see what happens. Two lads, honor of the pure, double martyr of sands, and an Ajani. Ugh, Lotus Bloom? Huh, okay. I'm not sure our mono white deck has what it takes to you beat ad nauseum. Martyr of Sands, go. Would be nice to play Burn once. Burn is like one of the most popular decks in Modern. And uh, it would be sweet to play it because I don't think Burn can beat our deck. At least it's not very likely to. Lotus Bloom, taken down. Oh, Amulet? Oh, all right. Well, okay. So we're probably dead. Sure. Opponent, passing. Well, play Martyr, number two. Play Ghost Quarter. Go to combat. Attack our opponent. Pass the turn. Lotus Bloom taken down. Coming down next turn. And then our opponent has all the manas. Mana Confluence. Opponent. All right. Untap. Another Ghost Quarter. Now go to combat. Do some attacking. Oh, this Lotus Bloom, though. This Lotus Bloom ruins everything. Get in. Hit our opponent. Play Martyr of Sands, number three. Martyrtron on the moles. Pass the turn. <sighs> but now our opponent has enough mana to play Primeval Titan. And enough mana to play Primeval Titan, I think, means we're just, like, dead. So, there's Lotus Bloom. Opponent, all the mana. What do they do with all the mana? Yeah, one of the things about this deck, in mono-white decks in general, is... 
they have good sideboard cards to fight against the unfair decks, but those sideboard cards, like Stony Silence, Rest in Peace, tend to be pretty expensive. So that's one of the challenges about Mono White on a budget, is you give up points against the unfair decks, basically. Just because you don't get access to the killer sideboard cards. Not that you can't have things go right and beat the unfair decks, but it is a, a bit of a disadvantage for budget mono white decks. Because the sideboard cards are some of the best white cards in all of modern, really. Uh, the Stony Silences, Rest in Peace of the World, those type of cards. Opponent, yeah, 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 yeah. Kraken, Mega Mana, Six Mana, Primeval Titan, and we will scoop it up. All right, well, yeah. Uh, what do we have to fight against what our opponent's doing? We can bring in two disenchants, I guess. And two disenchants might be literally all we get. Bring in two disenchants. Go down to Honor of the Pures. And run it like that. Yeah, Primeval Titan's pretty busted. It is a good magic card. Alright, we get to play first. Oh man, this is kind of like last hand. One land, so we got a ship. Well, this one we will keep. Although it's pretty sketch. Well, I mean, we'll run it. Let's see what happens. Yeah, keeping our six. Opponents also going to six, so we'll put a planes to the bottom. Well, planes and Sarah ascended. You. A Johnny is best suited in matchups with interact. Oh, more Lotus Blooms. Uh, best suited in matchups where people are playing creatures and interactive artifacts. I really would like two decks that I really wanted to play with this deck that looks like we might not run into. <sighs> Explosives on one. More lands. Uh, looks like we may not run into our Urza. The Urza deck would be a very interesting matchup for this deck. Uh, it seems like it would be a good matchup on paper. Whether or not it actually plays out that way is a very different story. But Urza and Burn are two of the, the decks I was really hoping to play. Opponent, taking out Lotus Bloom. So I got a Sarah Ascendant covered. And we don't really have a way to gain life. So this Pride Mate's going to be capped out pretty low at the moment. Opponent, Simic Growth Chamber. Bounces Aether Hub. Yup, yup, yup. And passes. Well, play Martyr of Sands. Sack Martyr of Sands. Reveal Winds of Abandon. Not a lot of life gained, but enough to grow our pride mate. Go to combat. Attack. And our opponent. Down to 14. Grow the pride mate. Man, should we just kill this growth chamber? Yeah, let's wait. There's no... There's no amulet yet. It would be nice to get this Pride Mate big enough to beat a Primeval Titan. All right, Engineered Explosives takes down Sarah Ascendant. Ether Hub returns. And Sight of Hand, doing some digging. Yep. Uh, opponent passes. Well, that's another Plains. So that's not great. Get in with Pride Mate. Hit our opponent down to nine. Ugh, yeah. Now I guess we got a Ghost Quarter. Opponent does have a Forest. Well, at least this means I need to untap land to be able to Primeval Titan us this turn. Lotus Bloom, coming down. Untap land. Opt. Opponent's playing a lot of spells. Yeah, we're basically hoping this Pride Mate gets there somehow. Opponent. Passes. Spectral Procession. Well, get in with Pride Mate. And our opponent. Down to four. Spectral Procession. Planes. Go. All right, opponent. Can you do it? We got lethal-ish, maybe. Lotus Bloom suspended. That should be too slow to really change things. Maybe this Pride Mate's enough. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Summoner's Pact. So here comes a Titan. But does Titan even do it? There's no Amulet. So Titan comes down. I mean, we should be good, right? We kill Titan, attack, win. Huh. I think we might have him. Just tempoing him out. All right, well, I guess there is a path to victory. We just got to get the clock going. On the mulligan, even. Oh, call me garden. Ugh, all right. And life gain. Well, oh. Ho-ho. Oh, oh. Winds of winds of Abandon. <laughs> Second Winds of Abandon for the plant token actually does it. <laughs> yeah, go away. You die. Bone it. Wow, they only have one land, too. Well, get the plant. We're going for it. Winds of Abandon. Winds of Abandon off the top. 
Okay, well, we beat a prime time. <laughs> sort of. I mean, we did, but, um, e all right, w go down one spectral procession for one honor to the pure. Run it like that. Ooh, opponent's on the play, but if we can get aggro enough, maybe, maybe. We saw how we could sneak out a win. It's possible. Well, we're going to keep. We kind of want another planes, I guess. Slight of hand. Let's see if our opponent finds a Lotus Bloom to get their ramp on. We're going to be able to make a lot of 1-1 one -one flyers eventually. Opponent, no Lotus Bloom. Yeah, lots of planes. Now we would like no lands for basically the rest of the game. Martyr of Sands, go. Uh, opponent. Slate of Hand, part two. If we do draw land, second Ghost Quarter would be fine. Since we know our opponent only has one basic, apparently. Slate of Hands, and there's a bounce land. Picking up the gemstone mine. Opponent. Passing. A Johnny. Well, go to combat, getting with Martyr of Sands. Hit our opponent down to 19 past the turn. Ooh, that is the one basic. Oh, but there's an Azusa. Okay, gemstone mine, gemstone mine, sleight of hand, opponent, oh, passing, all right, we untap, planes, so, well, step one, so awkward, opponent's got four cards in hand, so I think what we gotta do is, winds of abandon, get rid of Azusa, go to combat, hit our opponent, down to 18, and then, yeah, we're just going to strip mine, rot farm. Keep our opponent on three mana for the time being. Pass the turn. What you got, opponent? What you got? No amulets encouraging. Amulet. I mean, sorry about that, saying it wrong. <laughs> Don't want to mispronounce things too much. Teleria West. And explosives on one. And... Cracks explosives on one. All right. Opponent passes. Now play a planes. Spectral procession. Pass the turn. Sun home for our opponent. One mind another ghost quarter. Opponent passes. A Johnny. Hmm. Well, go to combat. Attack. Hit our opponent. Down to 15. Planes. A Johnny. Ooh. Okay. Well, opponent Pact of Negations, but that means our opponent's got to spend their entire turn paying for this pack. So we're not getting killed this turn. And they lose a land, which is even better. Okay. Vesuva. Copies Gemstone Mine. Opponent passes. Two cards in hand. We draw Disenchant. I'll play a Johnny. Make a token. Go to combat. Attack. Opponent down to 12. Oh, this is going to get close. Opponent, do they have the prime time? That is the first question. Ah, no prime time this turn. Dodging the bullet. Okay. We might be stealing it. Opponent, Ether Hub. Okay. So they have six mana for next turn. I guess another another explosives would be annoying. Honor the pure. So let's think about this real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I think what we do is play Soul Warden. Make a Pride Mate token. Gain life. Grow our pride mate tokens. Spectral procession. Gain a bunch of life. Grow our pride mate tokens. Go to combat. Attack. Opponent. Takes nine to three. Oh my god. Okay, this is it. This is it. What do you got, opponent? Please not engineered explosives. Anything but explosives. Uh-oh. Three mana. Telaria West. Oh, they're gonna get in explosives. Opponent staying alive. Explosives on zero. Wow. All right. That's a lot of power and toughness that's about to leave the battlefield. Yup. Well, there goes our board. Opponent passes. So play Sarah Send It. Gain a life. Take up a Johnny. Gain life. Go to combat. We're not going to play Honor of the Pure this turn. I think the easiest way we lose is our opponent having Land Amulet Titan. Opponent. Four, five. What do they got? Oh, this is so close. A Johnny built a board really quick. It did get explosives away, but Slayer's Stronghold. Summoner's Pact. Well, I assume this is a incoming Titan, but I also think we beat a Titan. There's no Amulet. There's the Titan. So 
I think this Honor of the Pure steals it. Also, our Sarah Ascendant becomes a a flyer if we gain a life. And if Pulse scoops it up, oh my goodness! After our conversation in game one about mono white against unfair decks, we took down Amulet Titan, the strip mine with the one basic land. That was key. A Johnny's good. A Johnny's good. I have been very impressed with the Johnny. Even in that matchup, which isn't a Johnny shining moment, was still very solid. Who? Sweet, sweet. Sweet, sweet. All right. Budget magic time. We are playing a Johnny Sisters, and we're going to keep this. Uh, it's good enough, I think. We got a Johnny. We got a Soul Warden. We have a Spectral Procession. We don't have an easy way to get to 35 life for a Johnny, but we do have ways to gain life with a Johnny. So we'll see. Steam vents for our opponent and Ancestral Visions. Yeah. Okay. Well, Nether Plains is not our ideal draw there. Well, get it one Soul Warden. Hit our opponent. 19. And 18 and 17. And pass the turn. <laughs> oh, yeah, they shocked themselves. I don't know why I said 19, but it was starting at 18 because of the shock. Bought it. Taken down Ancestral plays a Drowned Catacombs and passes. Not more lands. Please. Oh, my God, more lands. Always with the lands this deck. Go to combat. Get in with Soul Warden. Well, we kept a land heavy hand, and we have followed that up by drawing even more lands. Spectral Procession. Remands our Spectral Procession. Sure. Taking down Ancestral. Spire Bluff Canal for our opponent. Oh! <laughs> Magic Gods, why? Why? Get in with Soul Warden. Okay, so our streak of drawing a land every turn has continued. Opponent down to 15. Well, let's try this again. Spectral Procession. Opponent. Oh, counter Tribal. All right. Yep. Well, this is not looking good. <laughs> Who? We're literally on, uh, literally on seven lands, three spells so far. Could use something that generates card advantage. Opponent. Tapping, untapping, passing. Well, go to combat. Uh, attack, I guess. Hit our opponent to 13. Play planes again. A Johnny. Opponent. Simeon Spirit Guide. <laughs> Simeon Spirit Guide. Snapcaster. <laughs> Archmage's Jar. <laughs> Uh, opponent can afford to throw away cards because they're about to draw a new hand. Well, the yeah, this one's been rough. We just have not had... <laughs> we have just not drawn enough uh, enough action to really have a realistic shot at this one. So many lands. Ancestral. Opponent. Refill. Seven cards in hand. That is a lot more than we have. Watery Grave. Tapped. Opponent. Gets in. Passes. Well, Honor of the Pure is pretty bad. I will play it, though. Honor of the Pure. I'm sure our opponent has more counter spells. Get in with Soul Warden. Opponent down to 11. And we're not even going to play the Johnny. Odds of a counter just too high. Opponent untaps. So Grixis control with Simeon Spirit Guides. That is interesting. Okay, Simeon Spirit Guide. We gain a life. Opponent gets in. Down to 18. We untap. We draw. Good God. Well, play the planes. We would like to draw an Amiria. We have enough. We actually have enough planes that we just would immediately turn on Amiria. Opponent has a remand. Ugh. Not enough planes to recast our Ajani, so we will pass the turn. Opponent. Serum Visions. Yeah, we're going to need to draw something to refill our hand. Squadron Hawk. Ranger of Eos. Something that finds us more somethings. Because we are just on the infinite land plan here. Opponent, doing more things. As foretold. Okay. Ancestral Visions draws more cards. Yeah. Well, that... Hmm. Well, we'll see what we draw. Opponent, doing more things. Lightning Bolts are Soul Warden. Opponents draw on many... So, opponents tapped out, but we got nothing. I mean, we play a Johnny, but a Johnny just dies. We just have... We need Ranger of Eos or Squadron Hawk. One or the other. Down to 14. All right, that is Ranger of Eos. So, play Ranger of Eos. Tutor out some things. Um, Soul Warden and Soul Warden. Play Ghost Quarter. Play a Johnny. Um, yeah, let's make a Pride Mate. Pass the turn. Well, that went well. Opponent tapped down. And now we have things that are big enough to block our opponent's things at the moment. 
Man, Amiria. We only have one Amiria, but if we drew our one Amiria, it would be insane here. Opponent. Tap land. Crashing footfalls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And anger of the gods. Okay. And more? Opponent ops. Opponent's just running it all out. Every bit. Hopefully there's no lightning bolt. Opponent passes. Well, make a token. Soul Warden. Soul Warden. Martyr of Sands. Hmm. Maybe we could have done the timing better. Maybe we should have played the Soul Wardens first. Opponent. Oh, uh, do they have Archmage's Charm to steal our Pride Mate? That's also very annoying. Alright. Well, pass the turn. Oh, boy. Alright. Sure, 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 sure. Opponent. Alright. Snapcaster, Anger of the Gods. Well, that was impressive for our opponent. All right. Well, sometimes your opponent just counters everything. Ha. Huh. What do we do about this? So I guess Forge Tender in. Main deck Anger of the Gods. That's brutal. And I guess we got to bring in Disenchants. Go down and Honor the Pure. Go down on Winds of Abandon. And one Spectral Procession. Try it like that. All right. We are on the play. Well, that's a one lander. Can't keep that. Ugh. All right. Well, this we will keep. Opponent's keeping seven. That's disappointing. The Rhino plan tends to be explosive but inconsistent. So seeing it keep seven is not good. It's a deck that generally has to mulligan quite often. Opponent Mountain. And looks like a lightning bolt impending. <laughs> All right. More ghost quarters. They so just keep it coming. Well, play Johnny's Pride, mate. Uh, opponent in the tank for some reason. All right, resolves. So opponent's gonna bolt our Sarah Ascendant, I guess. Oh, they just have their their dream draw. I see. Land Simeon Spirit Guide Electro Dominance for zero. Okay, ancestral vision. Well, that does kind of not. That doesn't do anything. Sure. All right. So opponent spent three cards to draw three cards. So kind of. A weird sort of looting plan, I guess? Huh. I don't know what's going on with our opponent's deck. Opponent. Place an island. Passes. I'll play Ghost Quarter. Play Forge Tender. Play Pride Mate. Opponent remands Pride Mate. Well, we go to combat. Go attacking. Hit our opponent. Grow our Pride Mate. Opponent down to 15. Pride Mate up to a 4-4. Out of Lightning Bolt range. And we have Forge Tender for protection. Opponent as foretold and they have their rhinos always with the rhinos huh a johnny would be sweet if we could cast it play a johnny's pride mate play sarah ascendant go to combat uh yeah let's attack attack grow our pride mate big enough to block a rhino but the free spells are coming which is not great so gain a life pride mate pride mate pass the turn Ugh. opponent taking up as foretold yeah, this doesn't feel good. Because of that crashing footfalls, we're not really ahead on board anymore. And our opponent's ahead on cards by about a million. Even after their weird looting line, opponent cracks Polluted Delta. Gets a watery grave. Serum visions. One on top, one on bottom. And Chandra. Chandra, not very good here. Uh, I don't. Huh. Interesting. All right. Well, I guess our opponent gets to make more rhinos. I didn't realize that uh, you could use as foretold to cast spells from your graveyard, but I guess that is uh, that is how it works. Opponent goes attacking. We eat a rhino. Opponent hits us to 19. Land, please. Opponent passes. Now, that's a land. So play the planes. Play a Johnny. Gain some life. Grow our dorks. And... Huh... Yeah, I guess we just passed the turn. That's a that's a cute trick. Heh, good to know. So I guess you could do this with Snapcaster as well? And actually, no, I guess you can't. It doesn't technically flashback. It just says you can cast. Huh. Well, that's a trick I hadn't really seen before. Opponent. Everything at a Johnny. We will block a Rhino. We will block a Rhino. Um. Yeah, block a Rhino, block a Rhino. Grow our Pride Mates. Lose a Johnny. What you got, opponent? Polluted Delta. 
Wow, damnation. All right, I guess that's the game. Well, opponent's got a pretty wild pile of stuff, and I believe it. Uh, it is game. All right, fair enough. So what do we learn this week about a Johnny Sisters in Modern? And overall, we went 3-2 and two with the deck, which, with a budget deck, definitely not going to complain about going 3-2, and two, beating some, like, stone forgy style decks, uh, doing well against the Bant Soul Herder deck, even taking down Amulet Titan. And on the other hand, as we've talked about before and talked about a little bit through the video, mono-white budget decks tend to struggle with unfair decks. That's kind of the bugaboo with a deck like Johnny Sisters, especially on a budget, is uh, we lost to, like, Grixis Freeze Bows. Our opponent was just playing Crashing Footfalls on turn two off of, like, As Foretold and Electro Dominance, uh, just doing unfair things. And we also lost to Titan Shift, which is essentially a turn four combo deck with Titan getting Valakuds and killing everything. Uh, so that's kind of the hard part about being mono white on a budget. You don't really get countered spells. We don't get the all all-star white sideboard cards like rest in pieces and stony silences because they tend to be expensive so that's kind of like the drawback of being a mono white budget deck on the other hand we were crushing the fair decks and i don't even think we played our best matchups i really wanted to play bird we didn't get to hit bird i also really wanted to see what happened against wurza or some urza deck because a johnny getting rid of all the artifacts seems incredibly powerful in that matchup and we can get up over 35 life really quickly i was extremely impressed with the Johnny Strength of the Pride. Uh, the Wrath ability stole us games that we otherwise would not have won. Uh, coming down, the best example, I think by far, was against the banned, like, Tamiyo Stoneblade deck, where our opponent had a massive board. They had four Knight of the Reliquaries, they had Batter Skull, they had one or two swords. They were just going off, and they kept crypting us so we couldn't get in damage. Eventually, we drew a Johnny, we resolved a Johnny, after our opponent had admissions to Tamiyo, and wiped out everything and won the game. Like, that ability is so, so powerful against Stoneforge decks, any sort of fair creature decks. A Johnny gives us a chance to just be this one-sided, insane Wrath, and I feel like it would do the same against Urza decks potentially as well if it comes down fast enough. And even in its bad matchups, where maybe our opponent doesn't have much to wrath away, we can always turn it into two Ajani's Pride Mates, which is one of our better cards. That's one of our better finishers. So very impressed with Ajani's Strength of the Pride. And the deck overall functioned very well. I was very happy with how the deck played out. I don't know if there's a way to fix the unfair deck problem with mono white budget decks. We got the Epic Spheres. That's something like fingers crossed. Maybe it'll work out and come together. But really, it's a deck that's very good in fair matchups and kind of like questionable, I would say, in the unfair matchups. Thankfully, right now in modern, it's pretty fair. There are still unfair decks. We got beat by a couple of them, but there are a lot of fair stone blade, grindy, mid range, Jun style decks running around. And that's where our deck can really do some sweet things. So, overall, pretty happy with how Ajani Sisters turned out and was very impressed with Ajani Strength of the Pride, which was the main reason we played the deck anyway, was to see how good Ajani Strength of the Pride was in a deck like this. And it was very good with that zero ability in specific, picking up multiple wins that we otherwise would would not have been able to pick up, like just stealing games out of nowhere. So if you like game in life, like grinding out fair decks, this seems like a good option. Like I said, uh, gonna struggle with the unfair decks, but at the same time, we didn't hit our best matchups. Burn is like a tier one deck right now, and I think our matchup against Burn is probably like borderline hilariously good with all of our life gain. It should be hilariously good. Uh, so I feel like while we had some bad matchups, we also ground out the fair decks, didn't hit our just like auto win burn matchups, where a single martyr of sands is just like haha what do you do opponent we gain 15 life how can you possibly draw enough first spells to beat us so we didn't play our best matchups lots of unfair matchups ground out insanely some of the fair decks and that's a johnny sisters for you so anyway that's better budget magic for this week a johnny sisters for modern thank you so much for watching i hope you all enjoyed it and i will talk to you soon thanks for watching the video if you enjoyed it help us out by clicking that like button down below and to keep up on all the latest and greatest clips Click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.